This lesson is about number systems. The decimal number system that we're all taught in school has 10 symbols to represent numbers 0 through 9. But what if our number system only had two symbols to represent number? What about 16 symbols? It turns out that the concept of a number and the symbols you use to represent them is somewhat arbitrary and more abstract than you might think. Up to now, we've represented information using combinations of two states, A and B. We've combined these states in a variety of ways, but without any particular order or protocol. In this lesson, we make the bridge to the binary number system and other number systems by exam examining properties of all the number systems. Number systems are defined by their base, or how many different symbols there are. So the decimal number system with 10 symbols for numbers is called a base 10 number system. In computer science, we most frequently use binary, which is a base 2 number system, decimal, which like I said is base 10, and hexadecimal, which is base 16. The CS Principles framework discusses numbers and their representations under big ideas abstraction and programming. At the most primitive level, all data inside of a computer must be represented as combinations of binary states. A great challenge of computing is to find ways to represent different kinds of information as numbers. If you can figure out a way to represent it as a number, then you can store it in a computer. So to get started, I'd like you to flip your worksheets over and on the back, I would like you to represent seven in as many ways as you can. In the warm-up activity, we had students think about how many different ways they can write out and represent the number seven. The purpose of this activity is to show that representation of a number is an arbitrary choice and it doesn't change the fact about the underlying information. If I'm trying to say that there are seven apples on the table, I could write seven as the number seven, I could write out the word seven, I could write the Roman numeral seven, and that doesn't change the fact that there are seven apples. From here, we transition to working with a set of three shapes. Some red circles, you have some green triangles, and you have some blue squares. To try and make a number system out of them, we first have to discover how many three symbol groupings there are and try to put them in a logical and predictive order. I want you to change the last circle, the third circle, to a different shape. The lesson concludes by recognizing that the circle, triangle, and square shapes are just arbitrary symbols and that we can easily turn them into a number system with all of the familiar properties of the systems that we're used to. For example, if the problem had 10 shapes and we mapped each one of those to the digits 0 through 9, it would be really obvious how to count. When we've only got three symbols, it takes a little getting used to, but the number system operates in the same way. It would probably be helpful if in your partner, one person is the scribe and is writing down the ordering that you're making, and the other person actually goes through and does the arranging because you want to record it as you go. At some point, you'll have to reset and start reusing your pieces. So continue this pattern where you keep changing just one shape and do that until you get all the way through and you've represented as many shapes as you can. Wait, triangle, triangle, square, have we done that yet? Yep. Yeah. Okay, there we go. Do square, 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 triangle, triangle circle. circle. Is it important to have a predictable 18? It's not a number system if it's just a jumble of symbols. You have to have rules that let you get from the start to somewhere further along the number system in an incremental way, not in a pseudo-random way. As a helpful tool, the odometer widget can be used in the lesson and in the course more broadly to help visualize number systems and different bases. This is going to roll over to 18. So we drive one mile, now it's 0, 1, 8. This is a brand new car, by the way, because your parents only have 18 miles on it. Both students who self-identify as bad at math and those who don't might find many of their assumptions about numbers are challenged in this lesson, and they might begin to become frustrated. Remind students that computer science is not a math class, and we're, what we're doing here is looking for patterns, order, and logical systems. Working with abstract symbols at its core is the work of computer science. Some students might recognize early on that three symbols and three place values means that there are 27 possible combinations. Encourage them still to write them all out, as defining a logical order ordering will still be a challenge for them. It's not essential that their system for ordering the patterns mimic normal counting systems. 
There are many creative ways to do it, and this type of concept invention by students should be encouraged. We were like, oh, well, if we had that one left, we could use it down here to transition to the next shape. When using the circle, triangle, and the square, students might not see the connection to num number systems and struggle particularly when it comes to developing and ordering for the symbols. But it's a good struggle because it's important that they make some of these discoveries on their own. Try to keep their focus on looking for patterns in developing systematic rules that can describe how to get from one set of symbols to the next and to test that out with their partner. After this lesson, we're going to transition into using binary numbers, which are base 2, as well as the hexadecimal number system, which is base 16. A common mis misconception is that binary is zeros and ones. After this lesson, we know a, a slight difference on that. And binary just means that there are two symbols. And it is a number system. So we happen to use zeros and ones in common practice because they're easy to write. But we could use icons of giraffes and ponies to communicate the same information. This is an important example of abstraction that you can really emphasize to your students.